Good morning, Slaters. Uh, I just want to do a quick introduction of the administrative team here before we get started. Uh, Miss Paquette's not here. She's a co-principal and is focusing at the middle school. You'll get to know her throughout the year, but I want to just introduce you to the high school administrative team. So first off, I'm Mr. Worthing. I'm the co-principal here. Hi, I'm Mrs. Hayward. I'm the, one of the assistant principals. And hello, I'm Mrs. Hagenbarth. I'm the other assistant principal. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is safety. Safety is our number one priority. So over the next week or so, we're going to be going through bus drills, fire drills, lock in place drills. We'll let you know when they're coming. It's not going to be a surprise. Uh, it's going to be announced. And the whole purpose is for you to know where to go and what to do in different scenarios. So on that note, we're also going to talk, uh, remind you of three school expectations that we have this year. And uh, one that is that we're rolling out this year is the 10 and 2 rule. I don't know if you can see this. Your teachers in advisory might have this version hanging up or another version that we have. And basically, the 10 and 2 rule says that we would like all students um, in their classes for the first 10 minutes and the last two minutes of every class period. So um, give teachers a chance to do attendance and set the parameters for the lesson for the day. So no one's asking for passes for the first 10 minutes or the last two minutes of any class. Um, you know, no bathroom, nurses, drinks, whatever it may be. You can wait 10 minutes, give everybody a chance to get settled. And then the last two minutes, you need to make sure you're in your classroom prior to um, the bell. The bell dismisses you on either end. And um, obviously, there's always exceptions, right? So if there's an emergency, if you're, you know, are ill. Um, so when we're saying like the nurse's visit, that's more of a non-emergent visit. But if you're doing um, something where you, you need to go to the nurse, that's something you're going to talk to your teachers about. And that would be an exception to that. But that is is kind of that piece. And it's really focused about you being where you need to be so that we can account for you and and we can make sure that you're safe and it's also about you being in that classroom learning the material being with your teacher and and using every opportunity that you have here to improve yourself okay our next rule is around cell phone policy so last year we implemented a, a no cell phone policy in classes we're we're extending that we're kind of looking at how we implement this in a way that is most beneficial to you as a student here as well as to you when you go out into the, the college or career after school so our rule is that we don't use cell phones during class time that's also extending to if you leave class so if you needed to leave class to use a restroom the cell phone doesn't go with you it shouldn't be getting used in the bathrooms during class time where it is okay to use cell phones is in between classes and during lunches. So if I'm walking down the hallway during my science class, because I got a pass to go to the nurse or the bathroom or to get a drink, and I brought my cell phone with me and I'm on my cell phone and an adult in the building sees me, what happens? Cell phone violation. Okay. So if that happens, remember, and this is something that you'll talk about with your advisory teacher, there's a process. You lose the phone for the period. If it happens again, you lose it for the day. Um, and eventually this leads down a path where you'd have to have a parent or guardian come and pick it up for you. Okay. So if I'm, what if I was in the bathroom and I quickly checked my phone, you know, and I, it was, you know, during class, but I, but I was in the bathroom. What do you think? Cell phone violation. Okay. <laughs> so again, it's not that we're trying to be difficult, but this is really about the expectations throughout life. And this is something that we're, we're gonna hold everyone accountable, myself included. So if you see me in the hallway on my cell phone, uh, I, I give you full permission to come up to me and say, hey, you're, you're violating it. And if I, I, and there might be times where I say, yeah, I am, and, and here's why, and I'll explain to you, like I'm doing something that's really uh, important to the job and I have to use it for this particular reason. But uh, if I'm on it texting a friend, I don't think I would do that, but if I was, you have every right to call me out. And that's the same with, with teachers that if we're using phones. If your teacher uh, needs to use a phone, that they're going to tell you why. They're going to say, well, I'm bringing my phone up because I'm going to time you guys in this activity. And it makes sense. 
And, and that's just out of fairness. That's out of fairness to you and that we're valuing each other's time when we're in the class together to make the most of it. Well, you know, when I'm like at an event somewhere, I can take my cell phone out when I'm in the bathroom and use it. And nobody's like policing me and telling me I can't do it. So how is this preparing me for life if I'm not, not allowed to use them in the bathrooms here? So you always hear this, right? That we say, this is like your job. So when you're here as a student, being a good student is kind of like your job. And so what we're talking about is when you're when you're not using your cell phone during class time, it's kind of like not using your cell phone during a job. And that's obviously different than when you're out at a concert or a sporting event, right? That's not necessarily your job uh, unless you're like a pro uh, basketball player and then, you know, you're not using your cell phone during the game. But uh, you get my point. So that's that's where we're coming at. And that's our angle with this. So it's safety first. It's all about safety and keeping us safe, making sure that we're not doing anything inappropriate with our phones and maybe mm -hmm. aggravating other people during the day, too. Right? Yep. Okay. And at the end of the day, what are we doing here is we are educating. So if it's getting in the way of safety or getting in the way of you being the best version of yourself and being educated here in this building, that's where that's why we bring these up and why we implement these. Sounds good. OK, our third newish rule for the school year is around student drivers and the parking lot. So last year we did have some situations where students forgot something out in their car or forgot something in their friend's car that they drove in with and they needed to go out to the parking lot to get it. We have a policy for that. So if that is the case, you are to come down to the office and you need to have an adult walk out with you. So it might be myself, it might be a teacher, it might be Jackie, it could be a number of people, but you have to go through this policy to make sure that we're, we're doing this the way that it's supposed to be done. And again, this is around safety. We want to make sure that you're safe. We want to make sure that um, you're not in any kind of a situation that anyone has to be concerned about. So it sounds a little bit like when you go to a school dance, right? When you come to a school dance, you're there at the dance until you leave. When you leave, you leave, right? It's not You don't get to come back and forth from the parking lot to the dance. Exactly. Okay. But what if you really had to leave school um, what's the procedure? Like, do you just walk out? What, what happens when you have to leave school? So if you have to leave school to get something out of the car, like I said, you're going to come to the office and an adult will take you out to the car. If you had to leave school for an extended period of time, like you have a doctor's appointment, your, your parent or guardian has to either send you in with a note, we prefer a phone call, and they excuse you. And they sign out. Don't you sign out yes. in the office? That's what I thought. So never leave this building without coming through the main office. You need to come through the office and you sign out. So even if you're leaving for the rest of the day, you have to sign out. And that's because if we were ever in a situation where we had an emergency, we wouldn't be looking for somebody who might be at a doctor's appointment. Okay. So more safety issues, isn't yep, it? Yep. Safety for you and safety for others. Okay. All right. All right. So I know I said three, but there is one more. This one's always important. It's not new, but it's something that we constantly want to remind everyone about. And that is, do not be a bystander. Stand up for people. Stand up for yourself. If you see something, say something. The way we stay safe as a whole school is to communicate and, and reach out to trusted adults if you see anything that does not feel right, does not seem right. If you see something, say something. That's extremely important to everybody's safety here. Okay, and we're not asking anybody to get in the middle of any dangerous situation. Um, it's just if you see something, just please go to the nearest trusted adult and let them know what the situation is. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds like we're going to have a good year. This is going to be an awesome year. Go and Slaters. I hope you all know, if you haven't seen it already, we have a new mascot this year. I'm excited about that. Go Slaters, go. All right, go Slaters. Bye.